my three sisters, Asia is 92, 94, and 96. They're living in a house together. And one night, the 96 year older drops a bath. She puts her foot in and pauses. She yells to the other sisters, Was I getting in or out the bath? <laughs> the 94 year old yells back, I don't know. I will come up and see. She starts up the stairs and pauses. Was I going up the stairs or down? The 92-year-old is sitting at the kitchen table having tea, listening to her sisters. She moves her head and says, I sure hope I never get that forgetful. Knock on wood. And she knocks on the table. She then yells, I will come up and help you both as soon as I see who is at the door knocking. <laughs> You're not getting it. She was worse than the other two, my friend. <laughs> she was so forgetful. And you know what? That is the plan of the enemy. The enemy's plan is to do whatever he can do in order for us to forget the blessings that God already has given us. You see, he's going to use everything around us to distract us so we can forget who we are in Christ Jesus. When I was getting ready to prepare, when I was getting ready and I was preparing what I was going to talk to you, I was thinking and praying to God, saying, God, please teach me or help me to teach them something that can help them to become what you dream of them to become. Help me to help them. Because maybe you know, listen to me, or maybe you don't know, but God has a dream and a purpose for every one of us. He has a dream. Now, most of my teachings, they are fun and it's sometimes hard like a comedian, like a stand comedian and comedy stand and, and you like it and I know and I love it. But sometimes I need to teach you something that probably is not going to make you laugh. But it's going to have to make you think. And it's okay. Because sometimes you leave this place like <laughs> so excited. And they ask you, what do you learn? Uh, it was funny. But what do you learn? I don't know. And I want to make sure that today you not only enjoy your time. But that you take something home that is going to help you to digest and make you better. There are times to laugh. And there's times to abstain of that. I need you to pay attention. And if somebody starts to get sleepy around you, I bless you to do the holy thing, the holy elbow, and say, wake up. And then, okay? Can you do that? Because I don't want to distract my teaching and say, you the one that is napping, okay? Can you help me? All right. Here we go. Listen, God has a dream for all of us, a purpose. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. And what came to my heart as I was praying, and we were thinking, what was the next teaching for you? One word kept and kept and coming to my heart. It was the word transform. Everybody say transform. Transform. And it hit me so hard. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Over the next few weeks. Actually, we're starting today a new series called Transform. You see, my friends, unless we become transformed, we're never going to live in the purpose that God has for us. Transform. Now, I don't want some of you already heard this word probably in the past, so you think you know where I'm going, but you don't know where I'm going. So don't tune me off and say, eh, no. no, no, you don't. Trust me. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, because I'm reading these verse, some of you are going to be, oh, I, I know. No, you don't. Trust me. I thought I knew. But after I started a study, I realized, oh, my gosh, this is something that we need to learn as a church. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, therefore, Talking Paul over here, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, 
holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. We're going to be talking about that verse in the future, but now we're going to focus on this. Listen, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. But what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasant, and perfect will. But I want to focus and do not conform to the pattern of this world. Wow. The more I start to read and study, the more and more it became clear what I wanted to talk to you about it. Now, listen, not because you know the verse, you mean you understand the complete revelation that is here. Trust me, more than 25 years ago, I heard a teaching about this. But the revelation that comes from God is always fresh and new and specific for our church. Amen? So I want that you understand. It says transform. Look at me. Nobody talk. It says transform. It says what? Transform. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Be transformed. And then it says how? How? By the renewing of your mind. My friend, listen. The only way to truly change your life is to change the way you think. I'm going to repeat it again for the cheap seats that are not paying attention in the back. Because you're already feeling pain like natural. Libre. Okay, pay attention. The only way... <laughs> nobody got that one. The only way to truly change your life, or to truly change your life, is to change the way you think. You see, we have become a result of the influence that we live in. Do you understand? You and me, we were not Christians. So we live in this kind of life and we were pushed by the circumstances many times. And many times we did what we was not even trying to do, but because we wanted to fit in. How many know what I'm talking about? We wanted to fit in. We end up doing something that it, we even felt wrong to do it. But it was so important without Christ to fit in. And you need to know that that was conforming. So not knowing God for 30 years and now becoming Christian after 30 years, it is obvious that you have brought that mentality into Christianity. Because the moment you came to Christ, listen, you became new. The past is gone. And you have to learn to let it go. I'm just saying, okay? You have to at one point. But the problem is the flesh in us, the what? Doesn't want to go to the cross. You see, we want the benefits, but we don't want to crucify our flesh. We want the benefits of the cross, the benefits of the resurrection, but we don't want to crucify the flesh. You see what I mean? And there's something that we're going to deal with it unless we become transformed. We become what? Okay, nobody's getting it, but I hope at the end you get it. Transform. My friends, the only way to truly change is to change the way we think. Let me ask you a question, please. And pay attention with this one. What's the difference between conforming and transforming? You see, conforming, pay attention. For those of you making notes, conforming means to make or become the same or to behave in a conventional way by accepting without question the customs. You that make notes are not intended that you write everything that I say. But I want you to write this. It's accepting without question what others do. Traditions and the opinion of others. In other words, here it is. It is to fit into somebody else's mold to do what everybody else does. It's not what the world is, my friends. It's not what we used to do in the past. We end up doing what everybody was doing. That's it. That's what we did. See, it's like the first time, you know, I was growing up, and then my friends, they say, hey, Tony, listen, let's go and steal something. And I'm, I'm I came from a good family. Are you with me? I, I mean, I was a, a young kid, and I mean, I don't need to steal absolutely nothing. But I say, no, guys, they're going to they're gonna cut us. They're going to cut, you know, they're going to they're gonna get us. And I say, no, no, no. And they say, come on, let's do it. 
are you a chicken? And then I say, ah, no. <laughs> and I say, okay, you want to be part of us, Tony? Ah, you see? You want to be part of this? You got to do it. And here I am. And you know what? I went over there. And everybody was stealing something. So I don't know what to steal. I don't need nothing. So I don't, wanna, so I don't know. I'm the worst. I got plenty, you know. It was, it was a store to, to, you know, to do stuff. So I took a hat. You know, I took a hat, and, I, and I'm an idiot. You know, I don't know how to do it. So I took it with cameras all over the place. So I just went like this, and I said, I don't know. I'm just playing. But the reality is they got us. They got us. They got us. Then they took us to the side. And, and, they, and the stupid hat, it was like $7. And I got it in my pocket, like $45. You see, I, I don't need to steal the stupid hat. You know what I'm talking about? So they took us and said, what are you doing with it? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry, sir. I was going to pay. Can I pay right now? Can I pay right now? Thank God they let me go. But I learned that day, later, many, many years, that I was willing to do even what it was wrong just to fit in. Yes or no? You are willing. But we cannot be like that. We cannot conform. On the other hand, to be transformed means to change the condition, function, nature, character, or personality of something. That is why, listen, conforming has to do with behavior. Conforming has to do with what? Okay, you're not listening now. Conforming has to do with what? Behavior. That's why people said, I want to change this and this and that. And they change it for a time, but they go back. They never change. Are you with me? He's like, I'm going to let these drugs. That's it. These stinky drugs. That's what they say. But they want to change the behavior. But you know me. And you know what's going to happen later. What's going to happen? They're going to go back. They're going to go back. Because I'm here to say one thing. Unless you become transformed. Unless you start to. Uh, and, and how do you become transformed? By changing the way what? You think. And I'm going to be honest with you. Nobody can be transformed in their own. Mm -hmm. You're going to give a hang up to God. You better give a hang up right now. Nobody can suffer the metamorphosis. Listen. Nobody. Are you getting this? Nobody can do it in their own. Not you. Not me. Not Paul. Not the great apostle. Because he even said, I end up doing what I don't want. How many of you end up doing what you don't want? Yeah, I don't want to be like that. I so dislike to be like that. But you end up yourself. And you get mad with yourself. But that's when the enemy comes and says, you're a failure. You're never going to make it. And I'm here to tell you that he's a liar. You're going to make it in the name of Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you're going to change. Yes, you're going to become free. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to give a hand up to God. That's what you do doing now, my friends. <laughs> Conforming has to do with behavior. Transforming has to do with character. You see, your whole character changes. Conforming is from the outside in. Transforming is from the inside out. I have this problem, my friends. You see, I have this really problem in the past. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it later. I was sick all the time. I was what? Sick all the time. When I came here about 19 years ago, the place was so cold that my lungs, they were not used to that kind of cold weather. So me always talking, breathing the air, hugging, you know me, I'm, I'm always hugging, always kissing the kids. And sometimes the kids just, you know, here, and the adults give me all the beautiful germs, and I just go, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know what I'm talking So I used to be sick. Always coughing, so sick. Some of you remind me, maybe Barbara, those years, always sick. I mean, all, all the time. And I tried to fix it. I said, well, if it's the germs, I'm going to use sanitizer. And it helps a little bit. But soon, soon, I went back right away to the sickness. You know why? Because my problem cannot, couldn't be fixed from the outside. The problem was in the inside. You see, my immune system was weak. Are you with me? I needed to rest, to take some vitamins. I needed to fix from the inside out. Once I took care of the inside, and I went through the transformation, 
then I was able to stand to any kind of sickness. I need you to remember this story because you don't need to be conformed to the pattern of this world. Through Jesus Christ, you can be transformed. And two people are excited about what I'm saying today. I guess more people are excited about it. You need to be transformed. You see, conforming, this is going to blow your mind. I read it, and that's what I'm teaching it today. This line. Conforming is something we do to ourselves. Transforming is something God does to us. Something here in the back was saying like, you're not even getting what I'm saying, but you're like, I'm pretending, okay? Okay, I'm going to go slow again for those that you're not getting it. Conforming is something we do to ourselves. Transforming is something God does to us. And he transforms us, listen, how? By the renewing of our minds. God doesn't just want to change our behavior. He wants to change the way we think. Are you getting it? That's why last time you were so into it and you abandoned church again. Because you change your behavior. You're not allowed God to transform you. You see, the enemy says that you are nobody. And you have believed that for a long time. You have to change from the inside out. And I'm going to explain right now what I'm saying. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Look at how powerful is this verse. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What an amazing. All right. Whatever you think in your heart, the Bible is saying that whatever you think and you think in your heart, you become. That's why it's so important that you change the way you think. You see, at this point, the enemy can do nothing but attack you with thoughts. You see, the enemy cannot touch you, but the enemy can send lies. He actually is the father of all lies. And what he does is that he plants seeds in your ears. Look at me right now. He plants thoughts. And then you hear those thoughts. I'm a nobody. I'm ugly. Is this going on? You hear the thought. You speak the thought. And guess what? You become the thought. Are you with me? And sooner or later, you think and you are nobody. You are a worm. When God said that we are like eagles, that we should fly. Even said like butterflies. No, no. You know what I'm talking about. Me, you ladies say, yeah, like butterflies. We, we're not going to say, yeah, okay? Because it sounds bad. And what I'm saying is the enemy is saying to you, you are nobody. You buy into it. You see, the battlefield between you and the enemy, you know where it is? In your mind. In your mind. Some of you, the enemy are sending birds and you are making nests in your head. You are allowing the enemy to literally live in your head. I'm here saying it's time to move all the ugly birds that the enemy are sending to ourselves in the name of Jesus. Amen? So why? So when the enemy, but if you don't know what God thinks, how you can come against the thoughts of the enemy? You see, Jesus was in the desert. He was even tempted by the enemy. And the enemy says, well, I'm not supposed to you be the son of God. If you're the son of God, jump out of this place. And God will send angels. See, the enemy was twisting the word of God. He was lying. And what Jesus said, pushy, pushy, pushy. Devil, <laughs> be gone. That's what he did? No. He spoke the word. Christ had the mind of God and he spoke the word. When the enemy comes to tell you lies, you need to start to speak in the word of God back. Amen. Well, what the word of God says, you are nobody. No, I'm a son of the living God. I've been bought at a great price. I'm precious in his eyes. I know I'm not a worm. He has a plan for me. You're going to give a hang up to God. You better give one now. You have to change the way you think. My friends, we can be here for years and years and nothing is going to change unless you change the way you think you see i cannot tell you you're beautiful it's amazing to see the power that today people give to a nobody bullies out there and their words are killing so many people but who gives them the power us 
If a bully comes and says, you're ugly. And you, <laughs> well, he goes like, oh, whatever I say, it makes an impact. You're ugly. And you, <laughs> you know what? They say, you're ugly. I bless you, brother. You're ugly. I pray for you, brother. I mean, you're very spiritual. You, me, they say, you're ugly. I'm going to say, have you ever seen yourself in the mirror? <laughs> Don't do that, okay? That's not the right way to do. Okay, that, that's what I would do. That's the wrong way. It's like I remember so much. I was struggling with, you know, not always when I was with obese like I am right now. And we're going to talk about that in the future weeks. But um, I remember one that said, man, you look fat. And I said, and he was always like, hey, because he knew when I was all sport, I don't know, you know, muscle and all that. And he was always playing and playing too much in public. Man, you, you, you look like, not like a church. You look like a cathedral now. And, you know, he was always playing and playing. And, and I was, ha, 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 ha. And one of the days, and, 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 and he's bold, 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 bold. And, and very wise man. I believe they're bold people because they're very wise. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the truth. That, I mean, that's probably the truth. That's what they say, actually. You know, they think too much that they need to remove. But, but my friend was actually a very bright man. And he was always messing with me. And, blah, blah, blah. and one day I said, I had it. You know, I had it. I said, you, hey, you, hey, gordita, love. you know, it used to be like before. You know. And I turned to the guy and said, look, man, this is going to be gone doing exercise. But you, you're going to stay bold for the rest of your life. <laughs> it's not the way to do it. I'm not teaching you to say that. But the moment I say that, the guy went like, <laughs> he never messed with me again. So, is that in the Bible? No. But what I'm saying is, you have to stand for yourself. Are you with me? <clears throat> you have to stand for yourself. And you have to believe what God says for you. You know, it's amazing. God bless me with who I am. Right? And God gave me this hair that is difficult to control. It always points to heaven. Thank God. You know, that's where I'm going to go one day. Is it like, you know, you have to use gel and hairspray and the whole thing. And, and, and you know what? But I do whatever I can. You know what I mean? I, I do what I can. I, and I thank God for my hair. You know what I mean? But one day, my son, he was little. He doesn't know I was going to say this. He was like about 10 years ago or something like that. I'm sorry. He was 10 years old. Now he's older. And he came in and said, I have an ugly hair. And I said, I looked through his hair and said, you kidding me? You have the hair of like an artist, man. It looks so beautiful, your hair. It's not straight. It's not so curly like your wife. You just go to the shower, go like, I said, curly like your mom. What did I say? No, no, no. I'm not prophesying. And the girl with the straight hair, shoots, and not going to be me. <laughs> no, I'm not prophesying no more. So now they're like, they, all the girls are going to go and make the, 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 the whole thing. I'm just playing. I'm messing with you, okay? I'm sorry. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. He bought into the lie of one of his friends. One of his friends said something about his hair. And I said to my son, son, I'm not preaching the police about hair. Okay, duh. What he was teaching? Something about Jonathan's hair. Duh. I went with him and I said, don't listen to that comment. You have the mind of Christ. And when that thought comes to make you feel bad, you speak back what the word of God says about you. You need to renew yourself in the word of God and speak back. The day that I saw the guy that spoke to my son, you know, he has the worst hair ever. He was like pointing to every place. He was like a little bird after they go and take a bath and they go like this. But you know what? Insecure people, they want to give insecurity to people that is secure. Don't allow that. Don't allow that. You are a son or a daughter of the living God. It's time to become free and free in the name of Jesus. Amen? We need to be transformed. We need to be transformed. We cannot do it on our own. We can we are so, uh, so hard trying to fit in. And we have to stop. We have to stop at one point. I remember when I was young. 
And I remember, listen, this is, this is true. When I was young talking about the hair thing and, and everything, now the whole teaching is about the hair, right? And, and, and the thing, I remember in those days, curly, uh, curly hair or whatever, wavy hair, he was, I'm talking about the 70s, my friends, you know. The Paul Neiman's hair kind of, you, know, you know, wavy, wavy, and then short, short here and long. That would not go with me. And you guys know what I'm talking about. So they laughing, the old school people, with me now. Now listen, in those days, this hair would never go like that. I, I was willing to... Listen, in order to fit in and look like that, a Mexican, imagine, that was for an American or somewhere from Europe, a Mexican, all right? I went to the salon, and I let them put the little perm in my hair. Now you will see Pastor Tony. You know what I'm talking about? How many know that in those days, the men would do also perms? Remember? We would remember in those days, we put sand in the whole hair, and... And, and then, and, and, and I looked to the side, it was an old lady, and then I looked to the side, it was another lady, and I said to myself, this got to change in one point in my life. Look at what I'm willing to do. It was just right before I was going to become Christian, I said, this has to change. Look at me where I am right now. And then when I come out, I came like, Prince Charming. It's stinking because that thing is stink like crazy. But I was good, and I was good. And you know what? You know what? I went through the whole thing to be accepted by my friends. And when they saw me, they didn't have nothing nice to say. And that started to hit me harder. Because I learned that no matter what you do to fit in, you will never do enough. But you know what? Jesus did everything in the cross for you and me. There is nothing else that we have to do. We are accepted by the living God the way we are, my friends. Come on, you better give glory to God. Amen? But how did I know that? Because He changed the way I think. He changed the way I live. By why? By how? Changing the way I live. You see, your thoughts control your actions. So if you want to change the way you act... You must start by changing the way you think. If you want to be like Christ. How many want to be like Christ? Okay, three people. <laughs> okay, the Bible says that we're supposed to be like Christ. I'm going to ask again the question. How many want to be like Christ? Every hand in this place. If you want to be like Christ. Who wants to be like Christ? You must learn to think like Christ. Right? Right? We have to be transformed. Transform speaks about being renewed. We have to renew ourselves in the Lord. We have to. Let me talk to you about a little bit about my minivan. They give me years ago, I loaned some money to a Christian man. He was not able to pay me for a long time. Once he was able, he, I was not harassing him. Uh, I wanted to bless him. Finally, he came and paid me. He said he was very grateful. And then he says, Pastor, because you wait for me so long and, and you never told me nothing, I want to give you this minivan. And it was actually very nice. Years and years ago, in those days, it was actually a new van, a new minivan. When he said, I want to give it to you, I said, No, brother, I'm okay. I said, Yes, of course, I need a minivan, you know. I, I need it, actually. It was an answer from God. I took the minivan. But living in New York City, you know what I'm talking about? And it was a long time ago. Now that minivan was very old. It was old. It was crutch. It was, you know, you know, sometimes the kids were playing football and they were tucking my van as they were passing by and scratching it. And then my, my friends that I lended to them sometimes, you know, as, as they used it and they wanted to give me back my van clean, they removed, you know, sometimes some of the pieces of the outside. They were just trying to do the best they could. But my van was old and beat up. So my van was old and beat up, but it had a good engine and a good transmission, so I was still driving it. So my stepfather, that is an expert, you know, doing this kind of stuff, he came and he said to me, I, uh, I want to make a new, if you allow me, I, I want to renew, he said this, I want to renew the paint and I want to do a body shop, a, a body job. And I said, do it. If it's free, praise the Lord, you know. <laughs> He says, it is free. 
So he did. When he said, hey, I want you to see your van. When he showed me the van, I saw the van. It was like a new van. It was so beautiful. I look at the van and I say, oh, my gosh. Gladys, you're not driving this van no more. <laughs> this is going to be my van. And it was so good. It was the same van. The same van that I was not giving, listen, value before. And nobody was driving and treated with value. Now that it was nice and pain, you see, everybody it was given another value. You know what? The enemy has told you that you have no value. If you go through the transformation, I promise you that you're going to find the value. That you're going to find the value that you have in Jesus. Christ. If they have told you over that you are nobody, you will find that you are somebody. Amen? And now the minivan, even when I park it in the parks and in the park places, uh, as I take it over there, I say, it's not a Ferrari, but it's my new van. Don't scratch it, baby. Don't scratch it, okay? That's a new job. See, you need to understand that we have to go through the process. We have to. For the next weeks, that was my introduction for the new series. You like it? Are you ready for the teaching now? Yes? Come next week. But it's true. I'm not going <laughs> to It's true. That was the introduction of my teaching. Over the next weeks, we're going to study the transforming power of Jesus Christ. There are seven areas. Listen, listen. That God wants to transform in your life. Number one, he wants to transform your spiritual health. I don't know what I'm talking about. Your physical health, your mental health, emotional health, rel relational health, very important one, financial health, and your vocational health. So today, I just want to focus on our spiritual health. So important. Let me ask you a question. I'm about to finish with this. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You ready? No, you're not ready. How are you doing in your spiritual life? How are you doing in your spiritual life? Listen, listen. I didn't say you're a Christian. Some of you, I'm Christian. I didn't say. I didn't say how long. You've been, I've been Christian for a long time. I didn't say that. I said, how long? No. I said, how are you doing in your spiritual health? Well, I love God so much. I didn't say if you love God or not. I said, how are you doing in your spiritual life? I'm asking you this. Because some of you are saying, I've been Christian for a long time. Actually, the old people get sicker more. I'm going to be honest with you. The reason I'm going to teach you these lessons, because I was praying. God showed me that many of you are sick. Like I was sick once when I came here. And we've been trying to help you from the outside in. That's why it's only the behavior change for a period of time. But they're never the transformation. We want to help you to become healed. For the next weeks, I want to help you to become healed. Because I believe you and me, we have to become the very best. Transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to become healed. Because God is coming back for a healed church. I believe you want to be healed. If you are honest with yourself, let's start by this question. How many of you can say, I probably need some healing in my spiritual health? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit and His Word that is going to help us. Amen? Amen? Stand up on your feet right now. It is late already. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right now. I want that you pay attention. I want that you lift your hands and pray with me. And say, God, I thank you for your precious word. Thank you, God, 
that you can transform me from the inside out. Jesus, we need your help. I know probably I'm sick, but I want to be healed today. Change the way I think.